We're here in Kfar Aza with Governor Mike Huckabee. Shalom. Shalom. This is your first time here. You heard the news, you saw the videos, but being here is totally different. It, it's worse than I could have imagined. And the unimaginable horror that these people have been through, um, no human being should ever be subjected to the level of atrocity and savagery that the people of Israel have experienced. And I want the whole world to understand what happened here and who did it. And let's not pretend that there are two sides, because there aren't. There's a side of good and there's a side of evil. What happened to the Jewish people here was evil. And there's no other explanation for it. And it seemed at the beginning that the whole world was with us the day after. Yeah. But then the day passed and it's getting more challenging for Israel. And it shouldn't be. We need to make sure that people understand there's still hostages in Gaza from 25 nations, including the United States. Hamas didn't take those hostages because they were trying to do some humanitarian effort. They did them as bargaining chips so that they can try to buy themselves more time. I want every one of those hostages to be able to come home to their families. But I want Israel to have the full support of the world to fully prosecute this war, to eradicate these animals who did this to completely innocent people. Now, you mentioned innocent, and one of the one of the things that was emphasized today is the fact that there was a second wave of so-called citizens of Gaza. Tell us about that and what how you thought about that. People need to remember, and, and innocent lives are being lost in Gaza. We understand that. But they're being lost not because of Israel, but because Hamas created an extraordinary level of absolute chaos. And the other reason is that we need to remember that the people in Gaza voted to put Hamas in power. What happened with Hamas is largely due to the vote of people. It was Barack Obama who once said, elections have consequences, and they sure do. And I'm looking at the consequences of an election mm -hmm. where Hamas was elected to lead Gaza, which could be one of the most wonderful resorts on earth. And it is a hellhole. Now, when we're talking about the U.S.-Israel relations, it began with very powerful statements from President Biden, and there's still support that we're feeling today, but there is a feeling that the pressure is beginning. How do you see the U.S. policy towards what's going on today? Well, I hope the policy continues to be unequivocal support for Israel. We don't need to tell Israel how to prosecute this war. They're the only ones who needs to make, need to make that decision. And, and this is no time for anyone to be uh, giving Israel some instructions or lessons on what they should do. They're in a fight for their lives. They're not just fighting. This is not a revenge war. This is a war to prevent what we're looking at in this place from happening again. And Israel not only has a right, Israel has a responsibility that this never happens again. And that's why I hope the world comes together and says, we stand with Israel.